Hello there. Thank you so much that you took the time to tune in to ICC's online sermons. I hope you're going to be blessed by what you're going to be watching. And right after that, I have something important to share with you. So do stay tuned and we hope you will enjoy your viewing. Amen. This morning, we shall be looking at positive confessions. Positive confessions. And I will try my best to speak within the time limit so that uh, we can make the best of the day. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. It says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the words that we speak. Now, the confessions that we make in our life, they could either be a confession of faith or a confession of faithlessness. But as Christians, we are discussing how we can confess our faith so that we can obtain what God has packaged for us in his word. That is the confession I want to look at this morning. Now, I took our time to look at this word confession and where it originated from. The word confession is the Greek word which means homo legio. Homo means the same, and legio means what to speak. So this morning we are defining confession from this perspective as saying the same thing that God has said towards us. Amen. Saying the same thing that God has what said about us. About what God has said about your marriage, your career, your family life, and everything that concerns you. Unfortunately, many people today, when we buy any, maybe electronic, we first of all dismantle it, arrange it, before we see, discover that this thing is not functioning properly, and we find time to go and look at the manual. But the word of God is our manual. Everything that we need in life and godliness is packaged in his word. So we need to look at what God said concerning a situation so that we can apply it in our life and get the best of this life. So confession, as I define it, is what speaking or confessing or saying what God said in his word so that we can benefit from everything in life. From Genesis to Revelation, the Bible is packed with powerful verses. Our words can activate what God has packaged for us. Our word can unleash blessings. It can also unleash what causes. Our words can bless. At the same time, our words can what? Can cause a particular situation not to be. The words that we speak, they can be used to defeat the enemy. The words that we also speak can be used to obtain a judgment that has been passed against us. What people say concerning you, what people say concerning your situation, what people say concerning that situation that you are in right now, it does not matter. It is what God says concerning you that matters. I repeat it again. What people are saying about you does not matter at all. It is what God's word says concerning us that is what matters in the Christian life. So when we form this habit of confessing what God has said on a daily basis, what does it do? It helps to build up our faith. And the Bible says that without faith, it is what impossible to please God. Hebrews 11 verse 6. But without faith, it is what impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So when we form the habit of confessing what God has said, concerning my marriage, concerning my children, concerning my situation, when we continue to repeat what God has said, it helps to build up our faith. And the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. So this morning, by the grace of God, we are going to look at some biblical stories and see how they were able to overcome their challenges and see how we can also apply these principles in our lives. Now, we are going to look at a story 
from the book of Numbers chapter 13, verse 1 to 33. Numbers 13 from verse 1 to 33. Because of time, I will just summarize it. You know, when the children of Israel, when they have wandered in the wilderness, and God promised them the land of Canaan, and he said, I am going to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. That was the promise of God consigning them. I am going to give you what? A land that is flowing with milk and honey. But when they came to that land, they had an obstacle. They were afraid. Let us go in. Let us survey this land. Let us view this land. Let us see how the land looks like. Let us see whether we can conquer the people that are already in the land. Let us see whether this land has a uh, good arable land. Let us see if this land has the potential to hold a nation. And they sent out 12 spies from the tribe of Israel. I believe we are familiar with this story. I don't want to read this very, very long. Numbers chapter 13. You can write it down and check it out later at home. So they sent out these 12 spies. Joshua and Caleb came back and gave what good reports. They confessed and said, yes, God is going to give us this land. Let us go out and possess this land. That was their report. But the other 10 spies, they, come up, they came up and said, this land, we find the children of Anak in that land. The people there, they are giants. They are of gigantic size. They are going to swallow us up. We should not go there. They were saying the negative because of the people that they saw. Now, they forgot that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. They forgot that God had done miracles in their life. God has used Moses to lead them from the land of wilderness onto the promised land. God has done a lot of miracles for them. And they refuse to acknowledge what God has done. Rather, they were confessing the negativity in what they saw. What you see may not matter physically, but what is in your heart, the word of God in your heart, that is what will make the difference. Only Joshua and Caleb single-handedly said, we are able to what? Conquer the land. When you say you are able to conquer, you are really able what? To conquer. But when you say you are unable to conquer, that means you will be defeated by your enemies. So Joshua and Caleb confessed that indeed the land is flowing with milk and honey, and they brought an evidence from the land. They brought grape to say this land is really good. But how do we conquer this land? They believed the word of God because God had promised them that he is going to give them this land. But the other ten spies, they confessed what the negativity that they saw. How do you react when you face giants? They said, we are just like grasshoppers before these people. Are you a grasshopper today? Will you look at yourself and claim defeat in the face of adversity? God does not want us to profane or to confess such negativity in our lives. Rather, God wants us to speak his word. And his word is what makes the difference. The words that we speak can make a difference in the world that we live. The people became angry and they said, we are going to go back. God, why did, you bring us, why did you bring us out from the land of Egypt just for us to die in the wilderness? It should have been better for us to die in Egypt. And what happened that day? Because of their negativity, their negative confessions, God smoothed those men and they died. And God placed a curse on them and they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. That generation that murmured against what God has spoken, they never saw the promised land save of their word of their children. So you see that that negative report that the other 10 spies they brought in, those negative reports, they worked against their purpose. It worked against their destiny. It worked against what God has promised them. And I pray this morning that we will never use our mouths to confess negativity in the face of adversity because God has given us the power to speak what is right. God has given us the power to speak positivity in the face of adversity. I'll look at another story again briefly. The Shunammite woman in 2 Kings chapter 4 
from verse 8 to 42. The Shunammite woman. Now, this woman was a woman, the Bible described her as a wealthy woman. She had riches. She was very influential. She had everything that she could ever want. But Elisha, the man of God, he was always passing through that city every now and then. And she had it in her heart. Why don't I minister to this man of God? Out of her own volition. I believe we all know the story. I'll just summarize it because of time. Now, God used Elisha to perform a miracle in her life, and she had a son. One day, the child cried, my head, my head, and the child died. Now, this is where I want us to look at the story from. 2 Kings chapter 4, 8 to 42. Please write it down and you read this up later. When the child died, the woman did not go about confessing that God has given her a cause. The woman did not even cry. Rather, she went to her husband and said, I need a donkey. I need a vehicle. Let me go and meet the man of God. She did not report that evil report. She did not report that evil news. Rather, she said, I want to go and see the man of God in the mountain. The husband asked her, what is it? And she said, it is well. She said what? It is well. I believe she was quoting Psalm 138 verse 8. He said, God will perfect everything that what concerns you and I. God has given her a gift. It is a good gift. But unfortunately, the child died. She did not tell her husband. She saddled the horse with his servant, and they went to the man of God. The man of God saw her coming from afar, and he said, Woman, is it well with you? And she said what? It is well. I know this story may sound fictional or a biblical story, but that was what the woman did. We did not read that the woman yelled and cried, and the woman was cursing that her son had died. Rather, she said what? It is well. How do we react to negativity of this nature? How do we confess in this kind of what situation? When God has blessed us and we have lost some things in our life, do we go back crying to God or do we go back crying to men? She did not cry to her husband. It was when she got to the feet of Elisha, she fell down and told the man of God what was in her heart. And the Bible says when Elisha went with her back to her home, he laid on the child and God brought that child back to life. When you speak to your dead business today, God will bring it back to life. When you speak to your dead marriages that has problem, God will say, tell what, bring it back to life. Amen. When you speak to your head, God will bring it back to life. Amen. When you say it is well with your children, when you say it is well with your finances, when you say it is well with everything that concerns you, God will what, bring it back to life. She ministered to the man of God, and God used the man of God to make us smile at the end of the day. So this morning, we'll just look at five basic points. Why is it important? Why is it necessary? Why is it okay for believers like you and I to confess the positivity? I will share an experiment with us briefly. There was uh, a scientist. He's called uh, Mosot, uh, 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 I think Mosot or so. He carried out a water experiment. What was the experiment? He took jars of water and he will go to a bottle every morning and will say, you are loved, you are blessed, you are highly favored. He was speaking positive things to the bottle of water. And the other bottle of water, he was speaking negative things to the bottle of water. And he froze up this bottle of water and he asked photographers to carry out, uh, to photograph these images and they were extrayed. And they found out that the bottles of water that we have been spoken to with positive words had fine crystalline structure. But the other bottle of water that we have spoken to negative words had distorted crystalline structure. If ordinary words that we speak as humans can make such an effect on water, talk less of the word of God. So why is it important that we speak or we confess Positive words in our Christian work. Number one, 
Psalm 119, verse 11. Are we there? Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So number one, why is it necessary that we should speak or confess positive words so that God's word can always be in our hearts? When we profess God's words daily, his words will always be in our hearts. These words will guide us so that we will not what, sin against thee. The psalmist said, your words have I what, hidden in my heart. And faith comes what? By hearing. Not just hearing, by hearing by the word of God. So when you keep on confessing God's word to, your, to yourself every day, you keep on professing God's words to your heart every day, it helps to what? Build up your faith and obtain favor of the Lord. Number two, we are either justified or condemned by what we say. We are either justified or we are condemned by the words that we speak. Let us see Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. He said, For by thy words thou shalt be what? Justified. And by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Joshua and Caleb used the word of God to justify their findings. Though the obstacles are there, but they strongly believe that God is still what? Is still God, no matter what. They use their words to justify the supremacy of God in that situation. They use their words to build up the faith of the people in the face of the giants. But the other ten spies, what did they do? They used their words to condemn their own, their, uh, their own self. The words that the people heard build up negativity in their hearts and they said, no, we are not able to conquer the land. So, number two, we are either justified by what we speak or we are condemned by the words that comes out of our mouths. Number three, why do we need to speak or confess God's words daily? To obtain the promises of God. To obtain what God has promised us. We need to remind ourselves daily of all these things that he has promised us. Mark 11 verse 23 is a popular passage in the Bible. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast unto the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. He shall have what whatsoever he saith. That is the word of God for us. That is the promise of God. If you say to this mountain and you did not doubt in your heart, you know that God will fulfill his words in our lives. So, when we continue to confess the word of God, we say the same thing that God has said concerning our situation, every mountain in our life must give way in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In that verse 24, it says, you will receive whatever you ask. You will obtain what you have what requested for. I have never seen a father here that will deprive or deny his children what they ask for. I don't know, except the father is a very wicked father, which I don't believe anybody here is one of them. A father is very difficult to deny this, the child what the child requests for, except he's unable to afford it. But be that as it may, the father will find a way to satisfy the yearnings of the children. So God has given us that authority. He has given us that word that whatsoever you say it, without doubt in your heart, you are going to what? Receive it. Number four, we need to confess God's word daily so that we can overcome. So that we can overcome. Last week Sunday, we heard testimonies, powerful testimonies of what God is doing in this church. Those testimonies, they stir up our faith for us to hold on to God the more. So, we need to confess such words so that we can be overcomers. Le Revelation 12, verse 11, it says, And they overcame him, they overcame him 
by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. They overcame him by the word, the blood of the Lamb, and by the words of their testimony. What is our testimony concerning what the Lord is doing in our life? It is always good to give testimony so that others can be built up in the faith. I shared with Brother Anayo last week when one of our sisters gave a testimony that she went back to school at the age of 50. I said, wow, I am still young. I must go back to school. So such words, they help to what build up our faith. Such words, they help to build up our trust in God. When we hear such testimonies, it helps to build up our trust. And when we hold on to what God has promised, God is able and more than able to perfect that which concerns us. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jeremiah chapter 23, 29, 28 and 29, he said, The prophet had had a dream. Let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat? Say the Lord. Is not my word like a fire? Say the Lord. And like a hammer that breaketh the rock into pieces. So the words of God that we speak, they are like fire. They can burn the shaft away from our lives. They can hammer every iron into shape. They can melt that iron into the desirable shape that you want. When you see the undesirable in your life, you have to speak God's words to make it what desirable. Amen. If you see what is not desirable in your life, you have to speak God's words. He says the words are what? They are like fire. They burn off shafts. They are like hammer. They can what? Break every stone. It can break every iron into the shape that you want. That is the word of God for us. So, if you see anything that is undesirable, speak God's word to it because we know that God's word is like hammer and it is like fire. It can turn it into the desirable shape that you earnestly need in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And number five, for the preservation of life. We need God's word. We need to confess God's word so that our life can be preserved. Like our main scripture, it said, death and life are what in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 13 verse 3. If you are there, Proverbs 13 verse 3. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. And he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. He that keepeth his mouth, keepeth his life. And he that openeth wide his lips shall have what? Destruction. Those ten spies, I'll refer to them again, they opened their mouth wide. And the Bible said they were consumed that same day. But Joshua and Caleb decided to what? Keep their mouth shut and speak what God said concerning their situation. So, let us learn to keep quiet when it is necessary. Let us learn to speak when it is what important so that our lives can be preserved. We need to preserve our life by the word of God when it is what necessary. We don't have to turn around our situation by what profaning negativity. And lastly, we need to confess God's word daily in order for us to live a good life life. To live a good life. Proverbs 12 verse 14. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 14. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth and the recompense of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. That is the word of God for us. We shall be what? Be satisfied with the fruit of our mouth. It is good to say, I am going to be rich. It is good to say, I am going to be what? Healthy. 
It is good to confess that I am healthy, I am not sick, I am well, I am alive. But look at the other verse. It said, and the recompense of a man's hand shall be rendered unto him. There is nothing wrong in being rich. There is nothing wrong in being saying, I want to be rich. But you must walk with your hands. That is what I feel most, that is what, what I feel most people, they got it wrong. They confess all day, I am going to be rich. I am going to hammer. I am going to have this and that. But they refuse to walk. They refuse to walk. So how do you want God to bless you? God says he's going to bless the work of your word, of your hands. When you have received God's word, run with it. Run with it. Put it into practice and let God perfect that which concerns you and I. So after we have confessed, we have done everything we know what to do. It is the will of God in our life that we always prevail. And his will for us is for us to be healthy. His will for us is for us to prosper, to give us a hope and a future, to give us an expected end, to give us an end that is enviable. When people see your life, they will know that, yes, you have been with the Lord. When they saw the disciples, they knew at once that these men and women, they had been with the Lord. Why? Because their life was different. Why? Because they ate directly from the food of, the, uh, of fr from, from Jesus' table. They ate from him. They received this word and they put it into use and it made a difference in their life. I challenge us this morning that whatever we are holding on to, whatever we want God to do in our life, when we, hold, 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 when we hold on to what God has said, God is ever ready. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. And he is still the God that we served yesterday. He is still the God of today. And he is still the God of tomorrow. And I pray that God will give us that attitude of positive confession so that our needs will be met in line with what God has promised. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this message that you've just seen. I really hope you were blessed. And uh, if you are a believer, we thank you for joining us and please continue to watch and be blessed and be encouraged. Maybe you're not a believer and you're considering becoming a Christian. You know, it's really not complicated. All you need to do is just say a simple prayer and receive Christ into your heart. You can do it by joining me in this prayer. All you need to do is say, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for sending Jesus to die for me on the cross. Jesus, I receive you into my heart for forgiveness of my sins and to be my Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit, help me to be a wonderful Christian. Amen. Now that was a simple prayer, but if you really meant it, Jesus is living in your heart as your Lord and Savior. I encourage everybody watching this to be partners with us in the ministry. You can partner with us by praying for us. We covered the prayers of saints from around the world. You can also partner with us by telling somebody else about this link. Hopefully they too can be blessed and encouraged like you. And of course, you can also partner with us by supporting us financially, either one time or be an ongoing donor. Again, there's a link on your uh, screen that you can go and log in and find out how you can do that. And if this is probably the first and the last time I'm going to see you, I still want to pray for God's blessing over your life. If you're an ongoing watcher, stay blessed and continue to log in to getintouch.dk. God bless you all. Have a nice day.